Yeah. Even, right. the, even the size of the sunroof got a lot, a lot I know, larger. That's huge. Yeah. Now, uh, Mine ends like right here. I drive an 18 GLI. Okay. Now, all of them have the um, the shade that doesn't block the, all the light. Correct. Right? Okay. Every single one. And then you have ambient lighting that goes around all, the whole interior in here. And whatever oh, color really? ambient lighting you have is what yeah. you'll see for the dials here. That's why they're pink. How do we change that? So you can go into settings. Car, no menu, no car. Settings, and ambient lighting. There we go. And you can change. Nice. That. And then you can see it changes along with you. Nice. And okay. then you can set them to manual or automatic as far as what color. And you can actually control the brightness of each one. Like if you want it to be dimmer over here and brighter over here, you can do that too. It's pretty cool. And then those nice. appear when the lights come on. Uh -huh. So if you set it on auto, as soon as the lights, the headlights kick on, uh, those will kick on. And then you can see that that changed to yellow. That's yeah, I noticed yellow. that. I was wondering why they were pink. And then you can get rid of all of this in here and just see the navigation. If yeah, you, if I figured so that one out. To. Yeah, the different um, views. Let's mm -hmm. see, change view. There we go. Yep. I'm going to leave that. Which is really cool because that's, you couldn't do that on the 17 ones with the uh, Yeah, it just it showed thing. up in the middle, but... Yeah. And it would just kind of shrink the gauges or yep. whatever. This is like makes them completely go away. Yep. Hmm. I gotta get some footage of this at night time with that ambient light because you can't see that during the day. No, you can't. But it looks really good because they put you in a a dark room has like one light in it, and then all the they had like four or five jettas in there with the doors yep. open and all different color ambient lighting. It looked really good. Nice. But yeah, and then another huge change is they move that to right there instead of mm -hmm. deep inside here. For, it's a lot more convenient. You know what I noticed? This being light instead yeah. of black. Yep. Because you can see in there better. Mm -hmm. And there's no latch. You just lift it up. Yep. And it doesn't rattle. It does not. Thank so, God. So, yeah. <laughs> I was worried about that. I was like, is that good? But it has these little rubber bumpers yep. and everything. So. Ventilated seats, which is unique yes. for a Jetta. Like right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, Good call. I like the way it's three stage. Yep. The automatic start stop feature. And then it has the just DCC to too. Right so you have the drive <laughs> modes. Which, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. pretty much unique to the golf family before. We'll just keep it on normal again. I don't want the eco. Put it on normal. Sure. All right. Is there a particular um, test drive route? Yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of right turns. Good, good, good. I hate trying to take a left turn in all this traffic. Yeah. Especially right here when I get home. Yeah, that's it's not fun. I go left out of here too. And there's always somebody that works here that's like so used to doing it. Yeah. And they're like, why aren't you going? Why aren't you darting out in front of all that traffic like we do. All yeah. Time? So I just like wait for the road to clear. Of course. Yeah, there's the, always the people that stomp the gas and. Is that the acceleration lane right there, right? Yep. Let's see if I can find a spot to squeeze in here. Take your time. I don't like pulling out and dump in front of dump trucks. It just kind of yeah, that's kind of <laughs> mental block. Yeah. They changed the way that the the seats adjust too, as far as the passenger seat at least. What's different about the passenger seat? So before you had all your adjustments on the right side of the seat, mm -hmm. on like uh, the front right side or the middle of the right side, mm -hmm. and now the only thing you can adjust is the angle of the seat. You can't raise the seat up and down. Okay. But you can adjust front and back and then the tilt. And all the trim lines or trim levels have the 1.4 in it instead of the 1.4 and the 1.8. And then the GLI, uh, we don't know yet because it hasn't been announced, but I assume that would be a 2.0. Doesn't feel like a 1.4 liter. I know. They uh, they beefed it up a little bit. Actually, not really. They, they made it a little bit more responsive, I should say. They changed the train. They did a good job. Yeah, I think so too. I got a I got a uh, Scion IQ that has a 1.5 liter and there's no uh, way it can uh, <laughs> pull that kind of acceleration. Yeah, it has a little CVT thing going on. Yeah. Isn't the IQ like the size of this cockpit right here? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> tiny. Yeah. So you can't have nav on both screens. It's either one or the other, right? Uh, I couldn't get it to go on both screens. Well, it should pop up here. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right, you're right, yeah. you're right. It just takes it away from that one. Yeah. 
I guess it would kind of be redundant if they had them both. Yeah, yeah. And then it also has the uh, lane monitoring, which is new to the Jetta as well. The seats are a hell of a lot more comfortable, too. Now, when you say lane monitoring, is that like a blind spot system? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this and no. I mean, it has blind spot. They had blind spot flies here, too. But mm -hmm. um, they have, you know how the Atlas and Tiguan have the lane monitoring? So if you're drifting to one side, it'll kind oh, of it'll, steer you. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, I got you. Each, each manufacturer has the different terminology. Yeah, exactly. L lane assist. I think that's the technical. Lane keep assist, yeah. Yeah. Actually, um... That right there, yeah. Lane assist, there we go. Yep. Blind spot monitor, rear traffic alert, and front assist. Yep, front is assist is the uh, autonomous emergency brake. Okay, okay. So if I'm not paying attention, and they don't try to mitigate damage by yeah, slowing you down a little yep. bit. That's cool. I, now I ask this to everybody: Would you, would you buy a car that drives itself and just like sit in the car and let it drive it drive you everywhere? Nope. <laughs> Me neither. Nope, hell no. And I'm trying to figure out the the market for it because everybody I ask, almost everybody asks, says no. I wouldn't. I don't think there really should be a market for it. Yeah, I don't I mean, I but, understand the advancement in technology, but I mean, I can understand like emergency systems and backup type systems where somebody's not paying attention or sure something like that. But just sitting in the car and allowing it to drive you around and kind of relying on it. You know, yeah, that's that's a no go for me. Yeah. I did a whole online poll and I made videos about it. And I'm just trying to figure out because it seems like a lot of manufacturers, Volvo and of course Tesla and all these yeah. companies are investing millions and billions of dollars into uh, self-driving self technology. Yeah. technology. It's like, who wants that? I don't know. Sort of like the, I can understand this right here. This is like trying to get a, their fuel economy lower. Yeah. Nobody I mean, really wants me, this. Yeah, exactly. To meet government standards. Yeah, but it, that's why I was wondering if there's some kind of government push for the start stop self driving no self driving oh so well, cuz it's no it doesn't appear to be a market for it but yeah they're they're putting so much into it yeah i mean the government might have them uh, have like a little bit in there and i mean whatever they can do to help mitigate uh, accidents, accidents and things like that but at the same time yeah. uh, then there's less revenue for like police stations for giving out tickets for yeah. reckless driving so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like this transmission. Yeah, it's, it's solid. Yeah. yeah, there's no like. Yeah, you can tell it's a torque converter and not the um, dual clutch or anything yep. like that. It feels. That's what smooth. I have right now, the dual clutch. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, is it a little jerky? Yes. Okay. The GLI um, has the dual uh, dual clutch and it hates like first and second gear. It's very very jerky. Mm -hmm. Like when you start the car in the morning and you go out of the parking lot, you're either revving way too high. So as soon as you take your foot off the gas a little bit, then you're like, you know, it's like when you downshift in a manual car, you're like, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, it's like that. I get to aggravate, but it's pretty quick. So yeah, this. I mean, as far as the the market for this particular car is mm -hmm. going to be, uh, they're not interested in dual clutch or anything like that. It's more of a just a. Well, uh, it depends because, in my opinion, I was up for the dual clutch because I went with the GLI. Now, if you're going with something like the SE, the R line, or something like that, that's pretty much just kind of an economy car. Mm -hmm. GLI is a little bit more expensive than all the rest of them. That has a bigger motor and um, more sport tuned suspension and things like that. And that's kind of a different market than even something like this, which is the SEL. Um, but yeah, typically everyone's. Uh, Everyone doesn't think it's a selling point to have a dual clutch or a big motor or anything and like that. And also, it costs more, right? Yeah. Now, the um, the GLI, when they come out, you don't know yet, I'm sure, but mm -hmm. you think they're going to have independent rear suspension? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I have no idea. They want to go a different direction that they have been doing, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much they would make the Jetta, and then they'd make the GLI with different wheels, the different motor, obviously, and then they'd throw a spoiler on it and say it's a GLI. They said they want to make the GLI kind of how the GTI is to the Golf, mm -hmm. where it's practically a different car. Okay, okay. But okay, just gotcha. using the base platform of a Jetta and making a more sporty version of it. And that way it gives people that, that option. Exactly. Not just like the R-Line or just exactly. more appearance. Exactly, exactly. Okay. 
Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I plan to get one of those when I go. Okay. <laughs> Change from uh, the Fender audio system to the Beats audio system too. Yeah, I noticed that. I think it's like right here, um, which quality is kind of you know similar to be honest. Similar? Okay. But in America, the Beats brand is more, more way popular. yeah exactly more popular, especially with people of my generation and mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. I'm just surprised at the acceleration of that little tiny engine. Yeah, and it's smooth too. Yeah. You just go along. And it's Transmission not, too. Yeah, and it's uh, not having a CVT is probably my favorite part. Yes. About the Jetta. Yeah. It's an eighth gear at 46 miles. Yep. 40 miles per hour right here, so that's like a little bit over a thousand RPM. Mm -hmm. That's and it's and it's holding. I guess because it has that low end torque. Yep. Is that like 1400 RPM? Yeah, 14 to 18 is the is the power band. Exactly. Which is nice. Yeah. You don't have to be redlined in order to get some acceleration. I'm assuming this is where we go. Is this the, is this the correct way? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, okay I'll, just make I'll sure. let you know. Alright. <laughs> it's just a series of right turns and we don't take down this one because it's a dead end. Gotcha. Yeah, that's down where the park is, right? Uh, this, there's a school down there and uh, the recycling zone and stuff like that. Charlotte for training, we drove the Corolla and the Civic back to back with the 19 Jetta, and it was amazing everyone's reaction. Um, you just try to give it a, a fair comparison. Yeah, seems, seems to be holding me in the lane pretty good. Yeah, it detects it. Whenever no, that, whenever that sweet. road thing is at the, um, so you see how it's green yeah. down there. It's telling me to get my hands on the steering. Yeah. <laughs> whenever it's green, that means it's working. Okay. Or detects the, the lines on the road. He has to be going over 40 miles an hour. And it's quiet. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. Because this is a pretty bumpy road. Very bumpy road. the steering is it felt like it was real easy to turn in the parking lot but up here on the road it feels a little bit like you can feel does it does it self-adjust yep. basically okay mm -hmm. I like that because I don't like it when I'm going fast I don't like it too tight well I like it tighter I'd rather feel the road a little bit more than just completely like freewheeling okay um, I think all those things right are pretty now, much like easy. that yeah exactly They are driver's cars, in my opinion. Not more than kind of its competition. It's direct competition, I should say. That's the middle seat working out for you. Getting kind of cold now. <laughs> Are these real leather? Because it doesn't have a window nope. stick. Okay, so these are the, the fake leather. Yep, leatherette. Okay, but you can get leather, right? Not that I'm aware of. Really? You okay. Couldn't, you couldn't uh, last year, and mm. I didn't hear anything about them changing. Okay, okay. However, okay. typically, when you have ventilated seats, it is genuine leather. So, I could be mistaken, but they didn't go over... When they went over the, the changes in comparison, mm. they didn't mention anything about leather, and I think that would be something that would be worth talking about. Yeah, so, yeah. It could be. Which the synthetic leather seems like it holds up better. It does. <laughs> it does. I mean, I've seen both of them over time, and the leather looks practically brand new, you know, five, six, seven years later, versus the leather kind of sags. Yep, yep. But these seats are very comfortable. 
They are. Which is surprising. Based off their, uh, I guess their orientation and how tight they are, a lot of people like the less bolstered seats, but... Well, these are bolstered good, but, like, they're not squeezing me too bad. Like, some of the seats, man, uh, I get in there and it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. like the Recaro seats or whatever. Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, Focus. The um, the R-Line even had a little bit too much of a bolster here on the side for me. Yeah. I mean, actually, it wasn't bad once you get in the seat, but getting in and out was a little bit of an issue. Yeah, I don't really like the the lip that you have to move your legs when over. I said, I'm not, the Golf R, not the R-Line. I know what you meant. Yeah. I know what you meant. Those are because the R line wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same seats, but. But yeah, this one's good. I mean, it's not too. It's not too it's not like perfect actually. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a nice cruising car. It is quiet. It's very quiet. Surprisingly what do quiet. They, uh, what do they do to make it so quiet? Um, I think that uh, the materials that the car is made out of is naturally more thick and a higher quality. So it lets less road noise in. Because when you slam these doors, and I'm sure you have before, there's a louder thud, deeper bass tone like, than, yeah. you, than you know, slamming a Honda door, Toyota door, where it's kind of hollow and rattly so if yeah. there's nothing in between you know blocking the uh, uh, noise from the road and the inside of the cabin then I actually the noticed that on the golf r too when you shut the doors it's like have this solid feeling yeah all of them all the volkswagen every single volkswagen that i've driven uh has been very very quiet on the inside this one specifically i don't know what they did uh, last year versus this year to make the road noise less but i mean i drive my jet every day it lets in a little bit more road noise than this one does. I'm just gonna put it on sport. Now is that that's the same sport mode as is when I m m use this to go into sport mode, right? Um, or is that different? It's it's kind of different. Uh, this would be like you control your gear. Versus, I mean, like when you bump it. Oh, down. like downward? Yeah, yes, yes. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out there talking about the triptonic. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got that on my car. I never use it. Yeah, no one never does. I guess if you like downshift. I, there's no hills here, so we there don't have, are we don't no have hills to at all. Yeah, exactly. When I go over that with people, you can take a ride at this stoplight. Okay. I go over that with people who are like, oh, I'm not even gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Or people ask about paddle shifters, like, you're never gonna use a paddle shifter. No. Maybe once or twice if you have some kind of sporty car just for fun. Yeah, yeah maybe. That was neat. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you're driving like a Golf R, that's uh, the dual clutch and so manual, then why not use the paddle shifters? Now you can get a manual on this, but it's just like the super basic bare bones one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to be doing a manual for the GLI yet. They did last year. They should. I mean, they, they should. They did it in 17, but in 18, they made all of them the dual clutch. Huh. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, exactly. They should, though. But Hopefully. nothing's in stone on that, or is it just haven't released anything? It's up in the air. They said they're working on it because they, they want to get it right. So they haven't released practically any other details besides... This is what we're trying to do, um, and it's going to happen. So don't think we're not releasing the GLI. And it's going to be 19 or 20? Um, that's a good question, too. So they're not, not sure on that yet. And they're not sure if it's going to come out for the 19. Because they're going to have to do some serious catch-up to do the 19. Definitely. I mean, if something isn't you know, set in stone for design yet, then I highly doubt it will be 19. But who knows, it could come out at the beginning of next year and under the 19 name. But at the same time, you kind of lose value by doing that. So mm -hmm. it makes sense if they did it for 2020. Scoots right along, huh? Oh, 
I'm surprised. <laughs> I think the other salesperson didn't drive it yet because he was talking about uh, that it's probably going to be slow because of the small engine. You must not have driven Who said that? One of the guys out there at the golf cart. <laughs> I was like, well, you, have you said the golf cart you have was faster. I th think so. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. It was kind of in passing he mentioned that while I was getting in the car. No, I, when I drove these in Charlotte, we drove, obviously, there's a lot of hills, uh, curvy roads and everything like that. We were flooring it. And the, we, were, we were traveling in a train of, you know, uh, Honda Civics, Corollas, and then a bunch of these 19 Jettas. And we had uh, radios in the car so we can get directed and things like that. And he'd, he'd tell us to, hey, floor it down this and then and see how fast you can go through this tur uh, turn and everything like that. And I was fun. very impressed with the acceleration on it. And I... Everyone else had the idea of all of them being 1.4 as a bad thing, but... Until they drove it. Yeah. I can hear a little turbo whine there. Yeah, exactly. Just a little tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's trying. Most cars, you can't hear that. Yep. Oh, just some of them, anyway. Now it has the chassis control with the magnetic rod. Is oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that uh, I'm understanding that correctly. Yep. I think you had questions about that the other day. The yeah. DCC, if it was magnetic or. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think it is. Custom? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it. I think it wants you to pay attention to the road instead of setting your That's probably a good idea. <laughs> it would be nice to do it on the fly so you can tell the difference, you know? Yeah. But uh should be a button that's like, I'm not doing it, the passenger's doing it. <laughs> right. And everyone <laughs> driving without a passenger would be like, Yep, yeah, I'm not doing it, the passenger's doing it. Yeah, like if it has it has a seat sensor already. Yeah, uh, for the passenger. So I mean, you know, theoretically. I think well, I don't know what the uh, weight uh, minimum is, but I do know uh, that I could put like a book on this and it would say there's a passenger in it. So. Oh like really? I, yeah, that could be like a. So we can get a, around. A work around for that, yeah. But then it will, you'd have to buckle the seatbelt too, otherwise it's going to beep at you. You're right, and that does get annoying. You barely tell the All engines right. off. Yes. Engines off? Yep. Oh, because I turned that back yep. on. I didn't even, I was like, man, this is really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like a hybrid car, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't even notice when it stopped. Mm -mm. I didn't even notice. Let's see if you notice when it turns back on. As soon as I Yeah, just seamless. Yep. I think when it first got introduced with like Vol uh, Volvo and Mercedes and things like that, there was a lot bigger of a, a jump, jump to a stop. And that yeah there's somebody in my blind spot they used to, they were behind me and they figured they'd pass me before I got it <laughs> so I couldn't change lanes <laughs> yeah there's a bunch of nice smart drivers down here I think the um, one of the biggest proponents for the 19 Jetta is all of the trim levels coming with App Connect because right now uh, the Jetta S does not come with App so if you can get navigation, you know, in a base model car, it's kind of a, a big deal. Because of the Apple CarPlay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or Android Auto, whatever you have. Nice. And then the seats are the exact same design, but they're cloth uh, in the base model. 
So they feel practically the same. I wonder if it would be uh, dark enough inside the service bay to show the ambient lighting. If they'll, yeah, that would be great if they'll let me do that. Because uh, that's that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's one of the things that I do on my channel is night videos where I show the lighting mm. and everything. This one's got a lot of it. It's all under here, under here, all the way around. Hmm. And then, just like the, uh, I believe it's the Tiguan has the ambient lighting up here, or the panoramic roof, which I think is really cool at nighttime. Have you had any customers talk about the uh, the exhaust tips back there? No, I have not. But they look good. <laughs> they do look good. I mean, they're not useful, but. It just kind of looks only. Yeah. Just yeah. like the, um, the, the Tig one has the same thing, and the mm -hmm. Atlas has the same thing, so. Yeah, I noticed that. It was kind of surprising. But, I mean, the car, fantastic car, but uh, I was just surprised that they had, they had it. They had it for show instead of yeah. practical use. Which I <laughs> guess, I guess it's one good thing about it would be um, that they're not going to get dirty from the exhaust. Exactly. So, so they're just going to stay be, looking good. Exactly. Probably be a good idea to park it somewhere else besides the haystack area, huh? Yeah. Or do you want me to park it behind that white one? Um, hmm. Probably not. Behind the white one. You want me to go right here sure. for right now? Yeah. Awesome. And what was your name? Jordan. Jordan. Mike. Nice to meet I'll you, Mike. I'll put your contact information in the description so cool. they can contact you if they want to buy one of these. Sweet. Do you have any other questions about the outside of the vehicle? Um, they changed the uh, trunk a little bit. They changed the gas cap I noticed, a little bit. Okay, the trunk, when you pop the trunk, you have to lift it all the way up. It's, Otherwise, it'll keep coming. No, uh, it won't be like that for production models. Since this is a show model, it's because the okay. truck's not finished. Really? Like, if you noticed it, when you pop it open, it's yeah. all bald on the inside. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lining at the top, and there's going to be another spring that holds mm. the, the trunk up. Okay. So all it'll right. be the same... The trunk should fly up when you hit the release button. When you hit the release button on this one, it goes like this and just it opens pretty so much. So that so that won't that's not okay. Okay, I was wondering. Yeah. I, the only thing I could think of is that when you pull it down, you don't have to push it down with your hand to get your hand dirty. It's like, well, they just let it you pull it down and then it flops down type thing. Well it's the same thing for the old one. Like you're supposed to grab on the grip and just go like that. Kind of swing it. Yeah. That's what I do. I just grab it by the handle and hmm. and pull it down. But it's not supposed to be as, because right now, the first time I opened it, I opened it up all the way, and I put my head inside, and then it, it came down bam. on your head. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I was wondering what the deal is. So Okay, so this is a pre-production car, then. Correct. It's not finished, technically. Wow. So when is the actual one going to be? In like three weeks. Three weeks, we're getting, we're getting real ones on the lot. And those will have the fixed trunk. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Interesting. But these are, these ones have been around a little bit. Yeah, let's see here. If I wanted to look at the odometer, how would I do that? It's got the trip there now. Um, I think odometer is part of your um, driving data. Driving data. Range. Huh. Oh, I see it. I saw it. You saw it? I thought I saw it. No, I didn't. Huh. It is on the Beatles. I just assumed it'd be in there. Um, hmm. What if we were to turn... Well... Hmm. It doesn't matter. I was just curious how many models this car has, but it doesn't matter. Mm. 
Minus 20. Hmm. That's a good question. You think it'd be it's probably obvious. simple. It's probably it, it real probably simple is because simple. people have to change it for when they change the oil and they yeah. have to go in there. Huh. Another thing is, how would you go two kilometers per hour? You can switch the units on here. Okay, okay. Um, There's the units. Yeah. Okay. You can change all that stuff. Um, so before it would be um, obviously at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and normally there's like a, a button around. Yeah, like a little no, trip button. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, where do I? And there are some that have it in the settings where you can um, see change what you see inside of your MFI. That's what I was trying to get to. That's a good question. I'll have to find that out. Maybe pre-production models don't. <laughs> have <laughs> Maybe we don't have odometers. We we'll figure about? that out when we get the um, the other one. Back, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. I guess we're done. Cool.